my lovely, lovely imps. Today is Trans Day of Visibility. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Everybody's been talking about it. And uh, if you're watching this video, it's no longer Trans Day of Visibility officially, but it can be Trans Day of Visibility for you because God knows we need more than one Trans Day of everything good. So, um, this year, as of the recording of this video, Trans Day of Visibility is coinciding with the holiday, the Christian holiday of Easter. And as we all know, Easter is the uh, holiday that celebrates the, uh, uh, the biblical resurrection of, uh, of the Christian Savior, Jesus Christ. I have some Christians in my audience. I have a lot of diff I have a lot of atheists in my audience. I got a lot of varying diff religious views in my audience. Um, so I'm sure some of you have had lots of Easter festivities and enjoyed Easter dinner, hams, and whatever else that people eat on Easter. Uh, I used to hate eating Easter hams. I don't know why ham became the thing. In fact, some of you in chat, no doubt, are going to um, are going to bring up the, the old ham stun lock where I ranted about how I don't like ham. I don't like ham, okay? Especially Easter ham. Honey hams, not my thing, okay? Don't, don't want it. I don't like it. It's not my thing. Anyway, none of that matters. All of that is bumbling nonsense because can you believe that Joe Biden is trying to destroy Christmas? I mean, Easter? Yes, that's right. Of course, everyone will remember that um, Transgender Day of Visibility has been around for um, quite some time. In fact, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is just off of my remembrance. I don't have the page pulled up here. But I believe it was founded in 2009 that some that people set out to say, hey, why don't we make a day where trans people can kind of get together and talk about their experiences and have some visibility. Um, and shortly after that, uh, the White House recognized it, not as like a national holiday or anything like that, but just as a day that they recognized. They said, yeah, we see Transgender Day of Visibility. And that's, they gave it a little, like a little thumbs up, you know, like, cool, good job. Now, of course, since then, um, Joe Biden and Obama have both at various times made comments about, you know, in favor vaguely and broadly of trans people. But this year, Joe Biden went a step further and I want to read you what, what Joe Biden had to say. Then we're going to talk about the reaction to what Joe Biden said on certain websites. And uh, then we're going to talk about the idea of transgender visibility as a whole. So let's do it. Let's read what Joe Biden had to say real quick. So on March 29th, two days ago, uh, Joe Biden said a proclamation on transgender day of Visibility 2024. On Transgender Day of Visibility, we honor the extraordinary courage and contributions of transgender Americans and reaffirm our nation's commitment to forming a more perfect union where all people are created equal and treated equally throughout their lives. I am proud that my administration has stood for justice from the start working to ensure that the LGBTQI plus community can live openly in safety with dignity and respect. I am proud to have appointed transgender leaders to my administration and to have ended the ban on transgender Americans serving openly in our military. Some of you will recall that uh, Donald Trump, against the, against the advice of his own military leaders, uh, uh, passed a strange and deranged ban on trans people serving in the military. And uh, obviously military service is a complicated subject in and of itself. But the message of what Donald Trump was trying to say was very clear. Uh, he was attempting to communicate the idea that trans people are not fit 
to serve, uh, that they should not be considered uh, worthy of military service. And uh, that's a pretty strong uh, uh, and negative statement to make. And Joe Biden did indeed undo that ban. I am proud to have signed historic executive orders that strengthen civil rights protections in housing, employment, healthcare, education, the justice system, and more. I am proud to have signed the Respect for Marriage Act into law, ensuring that every American can marry the person they love. Transgender Americans are part of the fabric of our nation. Whether serving their communities or in uh, or in the military, raising families or running businesses, they help America thrive. They deserve and are entitled to the same rights and freedoms as every other American, including the most fundamental freedom to be their true selves, the freedom of, expre of expression. But extremists are proposing hundreds of hateful laws that target and terrify transgender kids and their families silencing teachers, banning books, and even threatening parents, doctors, and nurses with prison for helping parents get care for their children. These bills attack our most basic American values. The freedom to be yourself, the freedom to make your own healthcare decisions, and even the right to raise your own child. It is no surprise that the bullying and discrimination that transgender Americans face is worsening our nation's mental health crisis, leading half of transgender youth to consider suicide in the past year. At the same time, an epidemic of violence against transgender women and girls, especially women and girls of color, continues to take too many lives. Let me be clear, all of these attacks are un-American and must end. No one should have to be brave just to be themselves. At the same time, my administration is working to stop the bullying and harassment of transgender children and their families. The Department of Justice has taken action to push back against the extreme and un-American state laws targeting transgender youth and their families. And the Department of Justice is partnering with law enforcement and community groups to combat hate and violence. My administration is also providing dedicated emergency mental health support through our nationwide suicide and crisis lifeline. Any LGBTQI plus young person in need can call 999 or nine, sorry, 988 and press three to speak with a counselor that is trained to support them. We are making public services more accessible for transgender Americans, including with more exclusive passports and easier to access social security benefits. There is much more to do. I continue to call on Congress to pass the Equality Act to codify civil rights protections for all LGBTQI plus Americans. Today, today, we send a message to all transgender Americans. You are loved. You are hood, heard. You are understood. You belong. You are America. And my entire administration and I have your back. Now, therefore, I, Joseph R. Bidenett Jr., President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2024 as Transgender Day of Visibility. I call upon all Americans to join us in lifting up the lives and voices of transgender people throughout our nation and to work towards eliminating violence and discrimination based on gender identity. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand this 29th day of March in the year of our Lord 2024 and of the, uh, and of the independence of the United States of America by uh, the 248th, Joseph R. Biden, Jr. So, um, so, as far as states statements go from Joe Biden, that is a very strong statement. Um, it is it sort of sets out in no uncertain terms that the current president of the United States views uh, the attacks on trans people as anti-American and unconstitutional. It's a, it's a fairly firm declaration from from the president, and I appreciate. Um, the fact that in this statement, it wasn't just a sort of empty, we see you, we hear you, although that was present. There was the, we understand you, we see you, we hear you, but also deliberately pointing at and, and giving uh, attention to the ways, the very specific ways in which 
the far-right culture war machine in the United States, which, by the way, is a, uh, uh, is a, a minority, a very loud minority of Americans, um, but pointing out the way in which that machine operates to spread discrimination and hate towards trans people. Um, now, this is a perfect opportunity for me to ask my lovely chat, which you can see on screen here, to show their support for trans people on the screen. Just a small show of support. Now, I know a lot of you are trans yourselves, but that doesn't mean we can't get together and show some support. So this would be the time. Let's see that chat go. Let's see it. Let's see it, everybody. Let's see it. I want to see the trans flags. Look at that. We love it. We absolutely love it. Incredible. Beautiful. Now, Joe Biden, in Joe Biden's statement, you'll point out that there is nothing, you know, aggressive or offensive in anything that he said. Um, however, uh, the right-wing culture war machine and many of its adherents um, have had a complete and total meltdown. I want to give you an example of uh, I want to give you an example of some some tweets that we're doing uh, that we're getting some attention on social media uh, and the sort of nature of the response from the far right culture machine. Okay, here we go. Ready? This is a great one. Uh, Blue check chronicle says, this is a direct assault on Christianity. We're at the end, folks. Now, there's been a lot of these. This is just a kind of a, a perfect example of this. Now, of course, like I pointed out at the beginning, March 31st has been a transgender day of visibility for quite some time, and Easter changes days, you know? Uh, Easter changes days <laughs> every year. Transgender Day of Visibility does not, but that doesn't really matter. We also have the uh, fairly popular right-wing cartoonist George Alexopoulos who said, Ratio achieved, so they posted another one. It's our American duty to ratio this trash again. And this is, of course, uh, a tweet that is uh, attempting to rally negative sentiment towards this post, which says... Today on Transgender Day of Visibility, I have a simple message to all trans Americans. I see you. You are made in the image of God and you're worthy of respect and dignity. Now, I don't find that to be a threatening message. I don't find that to be an aggressive message. In fact, it seems like a fairly kind and mild message. Um, and my goodness, you can tell just by the interactions here that uh, people are very angry. The donut operator says, today is Easter. End wokeness says, no, Joe, today is Easter. You would never disrespect any other religion like this. Now watch this ratio. Here we have a uh, Trump guy says, bro, how many posts are you going to make about this? Celebrate Easter with your family and shut the fuck up. Signed, all Americans. Wow, I didn't know that uh, all Americans was uh, 20K likes on Twitter. And then, of course, oh, God, it just keeps, it keeps going. There's, all, there's just, now we get down into the part where if I was to scroll through this, I would just be subjecting you to raw transphobia. Uh, people just screaming, um, people screaming terrible things, people saying, oh, uh, this is the devil, you're the devil. Um, now, of course, all of them are very, very angry. They're all, oh God, like we can just, I can just scroll through. Let me just, I'm not making this up, okay? We got, uh, you can't miss them. If they were made in the image of God, why is a surgery needed? You know, see, so it just goes and goes. All blue checks, of course, because that's the way this website works. You can't be a Christian and a Democrat. You know, we got all this stuff. It just keeps going, you know. You just see, Christ is king, middle finger, enjoy the ratio. This is the type of, the type of 
dignified reaction they're having. Now, of course, they tweeted about, President Biden tweeted about Easter two times before he tweeted about Transgender Day of Visibility. But see, that wasn't good enough for them because it's not good enough for Joe Biden to talk about Easter two separate times before he talks about the other thing going on that day. They need it to be only about them, only about their viewpoint and their worldview and their beliefs and their view on the world and their hateful ideology. And, and the meltdown has been going on since... Uh, since the original announcement went out, which was on the, uh, as I think it was on the 29th, yeah, two days ago, um, was when, when he put out the original letter. They, they've been very angry. In fact, Trans Day of Visibility has been trending on Twitter since he made that statement. Now, of course, Twitter is a unique place, right? Um, everywhere else seems to be doing just fine, but Twitter has this concentration of a specific type of person. In fact, you could argue that Twitter in the last year plus or so has deliberately gone out of its way to cultivate a very particular type of person and they're very, very angry. They're extremely angry about trans day of visibility, um, seething and seething and seething. Um, it's, a, it's a very strange, it's a, it's a very strange thing. Um, almost as if, uh, uh, almost as if they are hyper fixated, deeply, deeply, deeply crammed into an echo chamber, uh, in which they think that a basic message of support to people who are slightly different than them, uh, is, is like an assault on American reality. Um, of course, all of the big names that you would imagine have come out and been mad about this. You have your, your, um, uh, you got your, your Sargons and all those people are all really, really mad about trans day of visibility being put on the same day as Easter. Ugh. But it's all just mad cope. It's all just pathetic mad cope. And the one thing that is encouraging to me is that, um, you know, besides people who are deeply in that worldview, everyone else seems to see that for what it is. Um, as it turns out, if you have a freak out meltdown to a basic, uh, um, to a, a, a basic message of support for people, um, you look pretty bad. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty funny. Now, uh, there's been videos and all this, and we're not going to spend too much time focusing on everything these right-wingers say, because they say a lot of stuff. But we are gonna talk about is uh, the concentrated war against trans people that the far-right uh, culture war outrage machine uh, and increasingly the pieces of government that that group controls uh, is sort of waging. Um, all over the country right now, there is a swath of red states where increasingly extreme right-wing politicians uh, have taken control um, and they are using their, their governmental power not to reinforce democracy, not to make democracy a, you know, a, a better place, not to really hear the will of the people, but instead to impose with their political power a extremely hateful worldview um, that involves uh, stalking and, and intruding upon the lives of mostly young trans people. Um, now, of course, there are some states that are taking it further, and most of the states um, who have in implemented these trans laws, have it, their, their GOP, their Republican uh, representatives, have publicly made it clear that they want to go further that they want to target and restrict the rights of trans adults. But a lot of this has been fixated on trans kids, young trans people. Um, everything from intruding upon medic uh, medical, uh, their medical lives, uh, d d using a political process to pass laws that interfere with healthcare, uh, which is something that you would, 
you would think that 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 people would have a bigger problem with that. But it's weird. It's almost like when there's a minority group that becomes an acceptable enemy to deranged, hateful people that all of a sudden they don't care anymore. They don't care if the government's in your health care. They don't care if the uh, government can override what you do with your own body or override what your family works out is the best path for you. They don't care anymore all of a sudden. Um, there has been a fixation on high school sports, on uh, passing rules that are humiliating and invasive. Uh, things like genitalia checks for young students uh, have been passed in multiple U.S. states, um, which is, of course, a very, very strange thing to do. Um, and also, of course, you might note, will affect people, uh, will, will open the door for affecting people beyond trans people. But we all know that these laws are being used to target and that they are being enforced selectively. That if you're a kid who isn't normal that these laws are designed to be able to single you out and make your life hell or the lives of your family hell. Um, we are also seeing alongside this in these red states a huge surge of uh, censorship. And I mean, not I got blocked on Twitter.com. I mean, we're that, that school districts are banning books that even make references to trans people, references to gay people, references to uh, uh, non-heteronormative or heterosexual experiences. These are these books are being banned en masse. Some states have gone so far already to pass um, invasive and unenforceable bathroom bans, um, where uh, you're supposed where, where you're supposed to only use uh, a bathroom if you have one very particular. Uh, presumed, mind you, there's no way to check, that's why I say it's unenforceable, but presumed um, uh, genitalia configuration. There are places that are banning references to drag. There are places that are making moves to try and ban drag shows outright. All of this is to, st is to point out the fact that right now in this country, there is a deranged hate movement against trans people that is very dangerous, and it is resulting in horrific re repercussions um, for trans people, especially trans youth. Trans youth are the ones that are most in danger. And of course, there are other aspects that are not so publicly talked about. One of the things that has been increasingly um, that has been an, an increasingly a trend in these states that pass uh, bathroom bills and trans healthcare bans and uh, restrictions on trans people participating in school activities um, is that a lot of these states have also begun to, uh, to pass protections for, uh, for what they will call things like conversion therapy, or they will call it sometimes religious gender therapy. They have all kinds of different sneaky words for it. And of course, uh, these groups and organizations are torture. They are not supported by any uh, type of, of medical science or psychological science. They are blatantly harmful to the people involved and uh, they ruin lives. And these things are quiet camps. When things like that are allowed to run rampant, trans kids disappear. They disappear. Uh, when there is no restriction on, uh, on organizations that set out to do psychological torture, uh, corrective therapy to stop a kid from being gay or trans, these kids disappear. Their, their, parents, uh, uh, are, their, their parents put them into a black box that has no government oversight and they go into these places and are treated horrifically. I have seen with my own eyes an increase in young people talking about their parents considering or sending them to camps like this. And um, I, the nightmare that that represents for the current state of affairs in our country, I cannot overstate it enough. 
a, I, I want you to just think for a minute what it would be like, even if you're not gay or trans yourself. If you are, you already know this experience. But if you're not, I want you to imagine what it would be like that one day your parents took a random obsessive approach towards something that you considered an intrinsic and inalienable part of yourself. Imagine it, they, you know, you like video games or something. Something that you think is totally natural. You're just doing your own thing. And one day your parents start freaking out. And then they say, we're taking you away from home. We're sending you out into the backwoods. You're going to go to this facility. And in this facility, you are subject to uh, authority figures having complete control over your day-to-day -day life, telling you how to think, telling you that you're wrong for being a certain way, and attempting varying degrees of therapies to change you, to change who you are. I want you to think what that might do to your, you in the moment and what that might be like afterwards. I want you to think about what you might live with, the scars you might live with from something like that. Now, a lot of these, we could go into the details about how a lot of these types of camps are rife with sexual abuse. We could talk about how sometimes sexual abuse is literally built into the programming of these. Um, you know, it's, it, it seems like it's, a, it's been a while since the population of gay conversion therapy camps uh, we, you know, a lot of us had hoped that we would never see that type of stuff come back again. But back in the day, uh, I mean, these things were going on all the way into the 90s. And some of them, pervasive ones, were proceeding even after that. But it was not, um, it, was a, it was a real thing that they would apply electroshock to people's genitals and bodies in order to try and change them from their, their wrongful, sinful attractions. And these things are, uh, are coming back. In fact, they're growing in popularity and in some of the states of the United States are gaining legal protections so that trans kids don't even become a statistic. That's the, that's the scariest part. They don't even become a statistic. They just disappear. They just get hurt. Now, even in Biden's statement, he brought up the fact that suicide rates among the trans community, especially among trans youth, is particularly high. And this is understood. It's been understood for a long time because it's been this way for a very long time. As it turns out, uh, if you find out that the way that you are is hated by a lot of people, and if you have a society that makes it normal to not just reject but disown and abuse people who are different. Uh, that will ruin your life. It can irreparably ruin your life. Disownment among trans people is incredibly high. Lack of familial support is incredibly high. And we have, ha we have studies going all the way back to the 80s. Decades of studies showing an obvious truth, which we can acknowledge anyway, which is that trans people who come from a family that's supportive of them have a significantly, shockingly lower suicide rate than trans people who come from a family that doesn't support them. And that doesn't mean that it's guaranteed. If you're a trans person out there like myself who did not and does not have a supportive family, I have some, thankfully nowadays, I have some members of my family who are supportive now. But when I came out, I was disowned by my family. You can make it and you can be strong. Do not give up. You will find people who love you and who will support you. Some of them might even be here in this community. But you will find them. Do not give up. But it does show the impact that in a society that is built around the family, what a culture of rejecting trans kids, a culture of treating trans kids like monsters, a culture of treating them like sinners does. It has a cost in blood, blood of innocence, blood of fucking kids. And that is where we're at right now.
there is a massive cultural divide in America. And uh, there are numerous states, Washington, Oregon, California um, are some examples. Um, New York, Massachusetts, I believe. Um, Connecticut, if I remember correctly, um, are all states that, uh, uh, oh, uh, Minnesota, um, are all states that have passed high level state constitution level protections for trans people. But there are a lot of states who have gone in a completely different direction. There are, there is a sea of red states um, that have gotten on board with disgusting overreach of government in the name of persecuting trans people. And I want you to remember the trans population is not very large, okay? There are more of us every day, and that march will continue for the rest of time, especially uh, as more and more advancements are made in uh, philosophy, science, technology that allow us to our, express ourselves more accurate, accurate to our true selves. That's only gonna continue on. There's nothing that anybody can do against that. Um, but uh, there are still, we still represent a very small population. And yet, s government after government after government in these, in these GOP controlled states obsess over us, fixate on us, and persecute us. It is disturbing, to say the least. And we already know where it comes from, right? Donald Trump was the one who used the national stage to explicitly go out of his way, ignoring the very strong advice of his own generals to pass a ban on trans people. We know where this comes from. The GOP in its current form, the MAGA cult GOP, are obsessed. They are fixated. They have a, uh, in the words of, let me just borrow from the words of popular conservative talking head, Michael Knowles. They believe that transgender people need to be uh, pushed out of the public. I believe the words that he said was that uh, transgender ideology should be eradicated from the public entirely. Now, what he means by transgender ide ideology certainly is interesting, right? It almost seems like he's trying to come up with a legally defensible way to say we need to drive people out of, uh, dr drive trans people out of public. And they fixate on it and they do it. They target random trans people who did nothing wrong to them. Look at the, uh, look at the right wing's obsession with Dylan Mulvaney. Dylan Mulvaney didn't even, didn't do anything. Dylan Mulvaney just lived her goddamn life. Just living her life, being like, hey, look at me. Here's a picture of me on Instagram. Here's a, you know, I did a, I did this musical. I was acting in this thing. And they freaked out. They've been obsessed with her for, for months, for almost a year now. We know what these people want. We know what the current GOP wants. And it's disgusting. It's sickening. It's psychotic and evil. Which brings me to the next part of this. I'm very happy that Joe Biden made a statement about trans people. And I'm also happy that Joe Biden made a statement the way that he did. I do think it's good that he specifically used that platform to call out the way that, that, that the GOP is operating in these red states. And it is exclusively in red states. It's not like blue states are sitting around considering trans bans. Anybody, uh, anybody who's not inside the MAGA cult is not on board for this. It's not like purple states are doing this either. Purple states are not having overwhelming trans. It's places where the, where the GOP has a stronghold that's doing this. And it's wild too, because it's not even a winning subject for them. Among their own voter base, trans issues don't poll well. And when they run exclusively on trans issues, they lose. We've seen this. However, 
They don't care. From the top level, from the messaging, they're the, the people with the power in the GOP have a very strong agenda. And they know that their voters are not going to vote for Democrat. And they spend every single day doing everything that they can to make that even further the case, to bring more and more people into the fever pitch doomsday cult that is the modern GOP. It's not an issue that pulls well organically. It has to be created. They have to create a culture war against trans people. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to force in an agenda that, that matches their moral uh, supremacy complex, their obsessions with gender, their obsessions with control. I'm happy that Joe Biden was willing to call that out. But also, with all of that said, visibility is a dangerous thing. It's a double-edged sword right now. Being visible as a trans person can be very dangerous right now, depending on where you are. Um, if you're in a red state, being publicly visible as a trans person is not a safe thing to do, especially if you're in a place like Florida. Being visible even on the internet is not a safe thing. I can't even begin to tell you how much comments I get on my content that is just endless. There is nothing else. They're not mad at anything that I said or did. They are mad at the fact that I'm trans. So much, so many, it's an ocean perpetually. I have lots of things that people could be mad at, okay? I'm very opinionated. But they come in and they're mad. They explicitly are mad that I'm trans. They explicitly come in and yell at me about being trans. And also, so that visibility is dangerous. It's a dangerous thing. And sometimes having a day of visibility feels a little bit like volunteering to be in the spotlight of like a prison guard. You know what I mean? Like you're going, sure, I'll be visible. Put the spotlight on me so that all these people out there who have a deranged fixation on me can make my life hell. And they do. Like I said, Dylan Mulvaney is a great example. Dylan Mulvaney didn't do anything. Dylan Mulvaney is barely political. And yet, they obsessed over her. And they do. And they harass her. And they threaten her. They spend all day seething about this random trans woman. So the visibility is a bit of a risk. And also, this isn't the beginning. None of this is new. We have needed this level of loud support and more from Joe Biden and the Democrats more than ever before, okay? There's, a, there's two reasons for this, okay? First of all, it is strong, okay? Standing up for justice, standing up for a persecuted minority that has done nothing wrong, that is doing nothing wrong, standing up and saying, we refuse to allow a deranged right-wing scapegoating culture war to put these people in danger is a strong position. That will win you favor Pe that appeals to people, that appeals to a lot of people. And those people will become educated. They will support you for it and they will be willing to stand alongside you for it. So it's not a risk to take a stance uh, positively for trans people in the same way that it is a risk to take a stance negatively for trans people. Because the reality is that um, outside of the, the, the propaganda e echo chamber, your average person who's just living their life doesn't think about trans people very much. And if you start screaming about trans people and how they're dangerous and all this, you're going to have one of two reactions. Either they're going to go, they're going to pull into it and go, yeah, I fucking hate those people. Or they're going to go, dude, you sound crazy.
what are you fucking talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. These words don't make any sense to me. Whereas on the other hand, if you say, hey, I don't like it. I don't like people being bullied for being who they are. People go, hell yeah, I agree. I want to be who I am and I stand next to you. I, don't, I hate bullies. So there's that aspect. But secondly, it's the right fucking thing to do. Okay? For years now, since the, since for four years, and of course it goes longer than this, but for four concentrated years, we have watched the right wing revving up the most deranged hate machine that we've seen in a long time. Okay? The fever pitch around trans people is sickening. They are crazy. They're screaming about trans people all day, every day. If you go to a right wing uh, channel right now, if you go to Fox News, if you go to the far further right ones, these talking heads, they're screaming about trans people all the time. They're losing their minds over trans people. And as much as I strongly appreciate the statement that Joe Biden made, letting this get out of hand, letting this get to this point at all, and not making a stand on it and saying, no, this is not how things are going to go. We are going to fight this on every level, locally and federally. We are going to make sure that trans people have protection no matter what. W would have saved lives and will save lives. Will save lives. It should have never gotten to this point. It's, it's, it is incredibly dangerous to allow an a unmitigated, unchallenged, uh, uh, or largely unchallenged uh, hate campaign a spiral about a small percentage of your population that makes things very very dangerous and it acts as a ve as a vector for for hateful rad radicalization prosy rosie says demon mama i believe that you predicted these events happening i've been talking about this since the beginning of my career i started streaming in February of 2020, and I have been talking about the rise of this campaign against trans people since then. I, I, w when Donald Trump was elected, I called in that night to a radio show, a popular liberal radio show, to talk about trans issues because I brought up then, all the way back in 2016, I, I said, I'm really worried for the direction that this is going to go. I'm extremely concerned because of the rhetoric that has been employed by Trump and his supporters. And Trump hadn't even started his full uh, uh, campaign against trans people. It was his supporters. I've been talking about this for so long. And I'm not the only one. Trans people and their allies all across the country have been trying to raise the alarm bell. And it's great to get this statement now because it is a strong statement. But we need more than that. It is going to cost the Democratic Party so much to allow this to, to spin out of hand. Trans people are being used as a wedge to, uh, as, but they are being used as a wedge, uh, a, a scapegoat to create hate around that allows a, I mean, do you see how they, look, I talked, I showed this thing. This, this is a great example. This is a direct assault on Christianity. We, we are at the end, folks, okay? This is not an uncommon opinion right now among the far right. They are using trans people as fuel to fuel a apocalyptic uh, a zealotry. It's not good for any of us. It's not good for any of the people who get sucked into it, who then become exploited and their lives are full of deranged hate for people they don't know. It's not good for anybody. I want to see Joe Biden and the Democrats take this issue seriously. I don't need the Dems and, and Joe Biden to talk about trans people every single day, okay? But the right is, okay? Every single day, the American far right is obsessing about trans people. They are churning out propaganda, and we need a response that is more than just a once-per-year statement. We need a real commitment from the Dems. Because otherwise, 
the, res the results are going to be terrible. And I do have a lot of fears for the future. I am not a doomer. I believe very much in our power to survive. I believe very much in our power to look after each other and take care of each other. One of the things that I promote all the time is building networks, okay? Strong, interconnected, real social connections between trans people that allow trans people to be fluid, that allow trans people to move safely from place to place, to take care of each other outside of the structures that they are denied. Many trans people are kicked out of their families. They are left alone. For me, I have been able to make it to the point that I have because I have a family of choice, okay? I have a group of, of, of trans people who I love very much, who we have bonded together and we take good care of each other, okay? We have built a structure for us outside of the norm that has allowed us to insulate ourselves from the damage that other people would do to us, to protect ourselves. And I advocate that very much. My community, which you can join by subscribing and also, more importantly than subscribing, by joining the Discord, discord.gg forward slash demon mama. My community is only one small node in a broader network that allows trans people, trans allies to bond together and find and start the process of making networks real, strong networks. Together we are so strong. I am not a doomer by any means. But I do think that the future is looking very dangerous for trans people right now, especially in the reddest of red states. There are red states that have passed laws that outside of some sort of high level federal intervention are unlikely to go away in years upon years. It will be years of hell for people living in those states. Years of, uh, of, of having their health care, um, their daily lives, their ability to, to live safely, um, you know, interrupted, having all these things interrupted because of these laws. And there is still the possibility um, that someone like Donald Trump or whoever his heir will be, attempts to take power or succeeds in taking power in the future. Donald Trump was already in power and he made life hell for trans people. He used the power of, of the office to fixate on approximately somewhere in the ballpark of 1% of the total population, less than 1% maybe, depending on which numbers you're looking at. Incredible, the amount of hate that the GOP and the right wing bears for trans people. There needs to be a push against that. There needs to be a stance against this. I will never be a doomer, but we have to be realistic about the terrifying state of affairs in this country right now when it comes to trans people. The activation of hatred around Joe Biden making a, a statement of support. It's, you can see it. You can watch the lines. You can see where these people are activated, who's activating them, and why they're activated. And that needs to be paid attention to. Anyway. Trans visibility is a tough concept. Okay, we put ourselves in danger by being visible, especially right now. I wish there was more than just a day like this. And I do appreciate Joe Biden's statement, but there needs to be more. This needs to be a part of a true commitment to fight back against this or else disaster will come. Disaster will come to the people I care about the most my fellow trans people, people who, to whom, a group to whom I belong, my loved ones who are also trans, but also disaster will come on a greater level. This type of deranged, reality disconnected radicalization is dangerous. And you should take note that they don't just hate trans people. 
you'll notice that uh, the more they hate trans people, the more they start to hate gay people too. The more they start to hate uh, anybody who's not a right winger. The more they start to hate uh, anybody who's not a white right winger. The more they start to hate anybody who's not a white Christian right winger. The more they start to hate everyone who's not a white male Christian right winger. It, it, it kind of is like, almost like they're getting sucked in to a radicalizing process that is intrinsically supremacist, that is deeply supremacist. This has to be opposed. We can't just look the other way at this type of deranged hatred, uh, especially when it's winding up to this level of a fever pitch. And I wanna say, I wanna end this, okay? This has been a lot. There's been a lot of ups and downs here, but I wanna end this with some words of hope. Okay, for all of you out there, first of all, self-expression. This is for the trans people out there. Your self-expression, your ability to live truthfully as yourself is so empowering. I have been through a lot, okay? My transition cost me a lot. Um, I did not have an easy transition, okay? Um, I lost a lot of family. I had family who went very vengeful on me. It was a hard thing. Um, and I spent a lot of my life trying to recover from that. But the freedom that I gained from living fully as myself with no apologies, that the fact that I could sleep at night knowing that I lived my life having made a decision, the one life that I get, that I made the decision to live truthfully as myself was so liberating. It had such a cascading effect on the rest of my life that sometimes it does it truly doesn't feel like my life had even begun until I transitioned. It's that drastic. And I can say that I would never go back, not for anything, nothing. There is nothing that would make me go back. There is no going back. I can't go back. And I never would. There's nothing that could make me do that. It is so torturous to even think about. That is how powerful the liberatory experience of pursuing your own, your, your own expression of your genuine self, being able to live the life that is right for you. That is how powerful that is. And it's worth it, okay? I promise. And also, you're not alone. I mean that not just in the Joe Biden way. There are so many of us out here and so many of us who are willing to help, who are willing to connect with you. There are people just like you who could be peers and allies and friends that you could bond together and form structures of power with. We do not have to control every institution in America. You do not have to have uh, uh, a favorable government to thrive certainly makes it easier, and I certainly would, would love to see a time in which uh, the hatred that is currently popular in America is gone. But we can thrive nonetheless together by building structures of mutual empowerment together, by bonding together, forming a net that keeps us safe, okay? You're not alone. You might feel like it, but I promise, keep looking and keep fighting. And third, the machine of hate is an inefficient machine. It is a grossly inefficient machine. It is so deeply destructive to everyone involved in it. They spend their lives angry. They spend their lives distressed. They make decisions that make no sense. They behave with complete disregard to reality and eventually reality catches up with them. It is true that that these hate movements can do horrible, horrible things, but they f really, really struggle to sustain themselves. And we can outlast them and outlive them. We can evade them. We can become imperceptible to them. We can learn how to foil them. And we are right now. Every single bit of energy and effort 
that goes to slowing down the hate machine gets magnified, okay? It is a, it is a machine that requires a fuel of, of, of human blood, okay? They have to pour their brain and blood into it at a great cost, and they run out. It runs out of steam, okay? People burn the hell out. And not only that, uh, it eats them. It eats them actively. They don't just get tired of it. They lose themselves and they can't function anymore. Which is part of the reason why it's so tragic. It's why I push so hard against hate ideologies because it eats people. They, eat, they, they ruin themselves. They ruin their own lives. They don't even know they're doing it sometimes. But for us, we can stay strong. We can be agile. We can be fluid. We can push back and we can take the opportunities we can to weaken this grossly inefficient machine. And we can win. And I believe that we will. Anyway, thanks for watching Demon Mama. And happy Transgender Day of Visibility. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.